Not one person had a Bible open. Why? Because he's nothing more than a motivational speaker. It's no different than going to a Joel Osteen church, except this is just a little bit smaller. No different. No different than going to an Osteen or a Preflo Dollar. Another false prophet. A TD Fakes. Yeah, they're all false. It's not that hard to find out, but see again, when you're blinded with the blind, follow the blind, they all fall into the ditch. Again, where there's no vision, Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there's no vision, my people perish. There's no vision in this church. There's no vision in this cathedral. No vision whatsoever. It's the blind leading the blind. It's saying, hey, you can stay dead in your sin. You can be a practicing homosexual. You can you can have butt sex with other men, oh, and yes, it's okay. You can have butt sex with other men, and you go to heaven. Well, I'm sorry, but um, if you live dead in your sin, you're not going to heaven because there's no conviction of the Holy Spirit. Because if you had the Holy Spirit, you'd be convicted, and you would want to change from those wicked ways. That's what happened to David when he had Uriah killed, and he got Bathsheba pregnant. He was broken before the Lord. He repented before the Lord. That is true. Psalm 51. You don't know your Bible. Exactly. You're going to tell me what the Bible says. And you don't even read a Bible. You don't even have a Bible. Probably don't even own a Bible. He says it's not true. He said David didn't David didn't, uh, David didn't. go before the Lord with a broken heart. Well, actually, yes, he did. Now we're going to read it. Because some man wrote it. Then he says a man Oh, uh, David it. actually wrote this. He Thank said, you. He said, have God mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, bless out, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I, this, this state, for I acknowledge, I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, the desire is true. Thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. This is David to the Most High. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors. Then will I teach transgressors. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. See, you have to go before the Lord with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and say, Lord, forgive me for my wicked sins. Lord, I don't want to be a practicing homosexual. Lord, I don't want to commit adultery. Lord, I don't want to be a thief. Lord, I don't want to be addicted to drugs and alcohol. You have to go before the Lord with a broken heart. Then, and only then, then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. He can't teach sinners their ways because he's living dead in his trespasses. This man is a hypocrite. He's nothing more than a modern-day Pharisee. Hypocrites. Scribes and Pharisees. He said, Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. There's no conversion taking place in here. Deliver me from blood guiltless, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing out loud of thy righteousness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. O oh Lord, oh, pretty fine, oh Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou desirest, thou lightest not in burnt offerings. This is what the sacrifices of God are. This is the kind of sacrifices God accepts. These are the sacrifices of the Lord. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. That's what the Lord requires. He requires a broken heart. He requires humility and humbleness. Not being puffed up in our pride. In our pride in our sexual orientation. Pride in our effectual orientation as in states and their, uh, their uh, about us uh, part in their website. Not pride in any kind of sin. Not pride in our idolatry and our, in our uh, worship of sports teams. And, and our jobs and our careers. God wants us to humble ourselves in the sight of Him and have a broken heart for the sins we've committed. All sins. All sins. All sins. Whether it's homosexuality, 
whether it's cussing, whether it's fornicating, whether it's being a womanizer, whether it's practicing adultery, whether it's practicing theft, and thievery, and robbery, and slandery, and, for, and, and, and drunkenness, and sodomy, and idolatry, no matter what sin it is, God wants us to come before Him with a broken and contrite heart and say, Lord, Lord, help me, heal me. I can't do this on my own. Lord, O.C. Allen can't help me. Carpo Dollar can't help me. Lord, please. Randy Morgan can't save me. Only Jesus Christ can save. Only His Holy Spirit can purge us of our sins and wash us clean and make us whiter than snow. Hallelujah. He's coming back. He's coming back for a church without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. He wants, he does not want us to be unrepentant sinners. Unrepentant sinners will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Unrepentant sinners will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So when you glory in your sin, when you take pride in your sin, you're saying you're giving God a big middle figure. You're telling God F you. Why? Because God hates pride. He hates pride. He lets it know in his word. He says it over and over again. God says it over and over again in his word that he hates pride. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, not only for their homosexual act, but pride he took in their homosexual act. Yes, it did. It had everything to do with homosexuality. Yes, it did. All types of sexual immorality. All types of sexual immorality. It had nothing to do with that. Yes, it did. They wanted to rape angels. They wanted to rape men. They wanted to rape men. And that's working that which is unseemly. Leaving the, uh, leaving the natural use of a woman and burning in their lust for another man. That's what happens with homosexuality. But look, I have compassion. I understand. Many homosexuals were abused. Many homosexuals were abused when they were children. You might have been abused when you were a child. You might have. You might have. You weren't born that way. Yeah, you sure weren't. Science actually proves that there's no gay. You're not born 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 gay. I'm sorry. Nobody's born gay. You're born into sin, but you're not born a homosexual. You best believe that. No, you're not. Because if you were born gay, you wouldn't have people getting delivered out of homosexuality. You wouldn't have people getting delivered out of something. Oh, see, exactly. That's a cop out from Satan right there. Lord, rebuke that wicked spirit. Lord, rebuke that wicked spirit. Because guess what? People can be delivered. And people want to be delivered. I have a friend right now on YouTube who's been delivered. Praise God for that brother. Praise God for that brother. Praise God for that brother. He has an awesome, amazing testimony. And he was delivered from homosexuality. He was delivered. Fortification, deliberation. So yes, many can be delivered. But not in a church where it says, anal. hey, it's okay to be gay. Asshole anal. You can't be delivered yeah. in, a, in, in a church that makes you feel dead in your sin. Anal. Again, David, David, he gave us the perfect model to go by. We have to go before the Lord with a broken heart. We have to go before the Lord with a broken heart. And we have to say, Lord, Lord, I'm a wicked sinner. I can't do this on my own. I need you, Father God. I need you, Lord. I need you to wash me white as to wash me, make me clean as snow. And why does you learn to say it properly? Pure. Don't say white. It does say white. It actually says white. Yes, it does. You're being racist. No, I'm not being racist at all. Now you're trying to stir up strife and hate. Guess what? God you doesn't like that. And hate. God think doesn't what, like that. Think God of what you've like done that. since you've gotten here. We've done strife that. We, we, we preach the truth. Strife. And see, that's, that's what's and not hate. going on in the world today. They're not, not preaching the truth. the truth. They're not, not preaching the truth. And, and they're leading many lost souls to hell. They're leading many lost souls to hell. Because they think they can actually participate in their sin and still go to heaven. That's not going to happen, folks. It's not going to happen. God's going to say, just as he says in Revelation 3, 16, I'm going to spew them out of my mouth because they're lukewarm. They're neither hot nor cold. So when you're lukewarm, you're neither hot nor cold, God is going to spew you out of his mouth. He's going to spew you out. He doesn't want to spew anybody out. But see, people have to humble themselves and swallow their pride. In other words, God will spew them out. Or, this is a good one. God, it's not God's will that any should perish. It's not God's will that any should perish at all. But see, that's why people come out and speak the truth. Here, get this one with his butt. He's got a nice bubble butt. Look at his bubble butt. See, you're a farm of sin. Look at that bubble butt. See, you can set a beer can on it. Shame on you. When you come to our neighborhood in New York, you're a born Christian affirming of sin. Our neighborhood. We don't come to your trailer park neighborhood. You try to avoid it. You need to be born again. Born again. 
<laughs> Church doesn't save anybody. Church does not save. Baptism does not save. So then why are you standing outside of a church? You know what saves souls? You know what converts souls? Preaching the gospel. That's what it says in the Word of God. Preaching the truth. Not yeah, well, that's what we're doing. Preaching the truth. Not lies like this false prophet O.C. Allen. He's not even a bishop. I wouldn't even call him that. And, and, Paul, and Peter said, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's will is that all should come to repentance. And what is repentance once again? Psalm 51 is the perfect illustration of repentance. David was brokenhearted before the Lord for, for having Uriah murdered and impregnating Bathsheba. And God, guess what God did? He smote, he smote Bathsheba's womb and took that first child. And then because of David's wickedness, there still had to be a punishment. There still had to be punishment. And David and Bathsheba gave birth to Solomon. And Solomon, he led a wicked, wicked life. He led a, he led a wicked life for a good portion of his life. And he repented at the end of his life. He said, all is vanity. Vanity is vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. This whole life is vanity. It's nothing but vanity. Taking pride in your sexual orientation is vanity. That is complete vanity. It's idolatry. It's idol worship. You worship, you worship your orientation. You worship, you worship your private parts. And that's what the old gods have did in the old times. Ba Babylonian worship, Nimrod, phallic symbols. They worship phallic symbols. That's why many of these churches have phallic symbols on top of their church. That's why we have a phallic symbol in Washington, D.C. That's why have, they have a phallic symbol in Rome. That's that again. You see what demons do when uh, it's all sexual, they come out it's in sexual the organ worship. They come out and that's no different than this kind of worship right here. That's no yeah, different. Naked. That's, that's no different. Thing. The, we same, the, same that happened, the same that happened when they would build groves. When, this, when, when those in Sodom would build groves. The Asherah. They would build groves of that false idol. False idol. Who's Asherah? That's Mother Goddess worship. Mother Goddess worship. It's all false idols. All false idols. It's no different than in the book. It's no different than in, 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 in Ephesus where they were worshiping Diana. And in the book of Acts it says, they said, they said, they said, great is the goddess Diana. Great is the goddess Diana. Again, worshiping false gods. Not worshiping Jesus Christ. They don't worship Jesus Christ here. They have no idea who Jesus Christ is. Because if they actually knew Jesus Christ, they would get set free from their wicked abomination. They don't know Jesus Christ. They don't know Jesus Christ. O.C. Allen does not know Jesus Christ. He is a Luciferian. He is a Luciferian. And it's pretty obvious. You judge a tree by its fruit. You judge a tree by its fruit. And the fruit he's producing is nothing but the Luciferian doctrine. It's nothing but that Jezebel doctrine. Because it all goes back to the same place. It all goes back to Satan. It all goes back to Lucifer. Every last bit of it goes back to Lucifer. So when you tell people they can live dead in their sin, they can live dead in their trespasses, when you tell people they can continue living like that, you're, set, you're, setting, you're, setting, them up to, you're setting them up to go to hell. You're deceiving them. And, and Jesus Christ said, Paul said, they all said that in the end times, the, one of the main earmarks that we're living in the end times is deception. Deception is going to run rampant. Deception is going to be deception is going to be at an all-time high. And this man is a deceiver. He is a deceiver. If the blind lead, lead at the blind, they shall all fall in the ditch. Where there is no vision, my people perish. This church has no vision. This church has no vision at all. Because if they had some vision, they would actually read what the Word of God says. Yeah, thank you, sir. So, so say a Satan. So say a Satan. Anybody you disagree with is Satan. Look. No, it's the spirit that's in them. I'm not saying they're Satan. You ain't got no spirit That's the spirit that's in them. Just like the spirit that's in you. You have the spirit of Satan. Yeah, you got the spirit of Satan. Really? You have no idea. Look at you. Look at you coming out in public with no clothes on. Are we not born nude? Does nudism scare you? Yeah. God it actually kind of scares me when you're standing behind me and you're gyrating and you're making weird, perverted sounds. That does kind of scare me a little bit. Dude, you, I'm surprised you even got a wife. You're not that attractive, okay? Your little friend here? Hi. You, I'm glad you don't no, think I'm attractive. That's good. Because men are supposed to be attracted to men. I don't think you're attractive. I don't think he's attractive. That's right. Go home, asshole. Look at the homo sympathizers. 
All sympathizers won't make it either. They won't make it either. And neither They're not going to make it. Unless they repent. Unless they repent. They have to. And what again? What is repentance? Repentance is having a broken heart. A blowjob. for your sin. And you, want, and you don't want to live in that sin. You want to turn all your life to Jesus Christ. That's what repentance is. It's not a work. It's not a work. It's a work of the Holy Spirit. It's a work the Spirit of God does in people. Those that are His children. If anyone says that's not the case, they make God out to be a liar. They make His Word out to be a liar. He purges those. He purges those that have the Spirit in them. Because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit cannot dwell with a false spirit. The Holy Spirit is not going to dwell with a false spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's not going to dwell in the temple of wickedness. They don't at all. They worship Dagon. They worship their false gods and their false idols. O.C. Allen walks around and dresses up like it's Halloween, like he's a pope or something. Has on his little pope hat, his little Dagon hat, and he has his little scepter and his little dress and cape that he wears, and he acts, and he acts like it's Halloween. Why is there all these theatrics? Well, what's up with all these theatrics? Well, that's typical. That's typical of these Southern Pentecostal churches. They live by theatrics. They speak in false tongues with no interpretation. They speak in false demonic tongues with no interpretation. That's called righteous judgment, ma'am. This church speaks in false demonic tongues. And they worship the and they, they affirm the Bible. The well, the the pastor here talk. is a homosexual. A man said that God did not write the Bible. Yes. He, he and all his little, all his little cronies, they dress up in their wizard outfits. They dress up in their wizard outfits, and they put on a big show for their people. Like it's Halloween, like they're playing dress up. Grown men playing dress up. Grown men playing dress up. But what, what, what do you expect from a bunch of effeminate men? Bunch of feminine men like O.C. Allen. O.C. Allen. One of the biggest feminine men in Atlanta. Preaching a feminine gospel. They gut the gospel of Christ. And Paul said, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which he ever seen, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. So why do you think God sent AIDS into the world? And why is it that most people who have AIDS are homosexuals? The average lifespan of a homosexual is not that long compared to a normal person. And why is that? Because it's not natural. It's against nature. Just as it says in Romans. Just as it says in Romans. Just as it says in Romans that it's unnatural. This is one scripture they don't preach enough about in these kind of churches. They try to hide it. Alright, so, this is Paul. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that they which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has suited unto them, for the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. They are without excuse in here. O.C. Allen is without excuse. There's no excuse for what he's doing. But see, when you're Satan, of course you're going to pervert God's word. And you're going to let perverts run around. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. God gave them up to uncleanness. This is uncleanness. Men with men is uncleanness in the sight of God. They gave them up to uncleanness. Through the lust, through the lust, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their bodies between themselves. He's talking about homosexuality. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who was blessed forever. Amen. 
For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. Vile affections. This church is called affect. What was it? Affectional orientation, based on their affectional orientation. This is Bible right here, folks. He gave them up unto their vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use to that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the man, working that they burn. I'm sorry. They did, Likewise, men leading the natural use of the woman, burning their lusts one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense, which is compensation, of their error which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over. God's giving O.C. Allen over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, proud, they're very proud, they're boasters, they're inventors of evil things, they're disobedient to parents, they're without understanding, they're covenant breakers, they're without natural affection, they're implacable, they're unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So people, even the sympathizers, they have pleasure. Homosexual sympathizers have pleasure in those that do these ungodly acts. See again, it's not God's will that any should perish. That all men should come to repent. He does not want them to die. He does not want them to toss them in the lake of fire and in hell. He wants them to actually come to repentance. But see, people have to know what they're repenting from. What are you repenting from? What are you saved from? What are you saved from? People say, oh, I'm saved, I'm saved. What are you saved from? Are you saved from your sin? That's what being saved means. It means you're saved from sin. Christ died on the cross for the sins of mankind, not so we can live in them any longer. Romans 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that life, as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. I can make the sign, I'm just holding it. That doesn't make it acceptable. It doesn't make it acceptable what y'all are doing and saying Actually, out here. it does. Actually, it does. The Word of God tells us in Romans 10 to go out and preach. Jesus said in Matthew or Mark 16, 15, go into all the world, all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. I'm going to go back to Romans, Romans 6, but I'm going to read Romans 10, 14 again. It says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall the people hear the truth if a preacher is not preaching the truth? A preacher needs to be preaching the truth so that people know what the truth is. They put their trust and faith in this man instead of in Jesus Christ. And that's why they're going to go to hell unless they repent. And that's why God sent two holy preachers out here today to actually preach the truth. Because it's not being done in this lukewarm apostate church. This lukewarm apostate church. False prophet O.C. Allen. You're a false prophet, dude. False prophet. Romans 6. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That old man, that old lifestyle we live, no matter what kind of lifestyle it is, whether it's homosexuality, thievery, fornication, adultery, whatever it is, that old man, the old man is crucified with Christ. That old man is crucified. It's crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. 
This church and churches like this, gay affirming churches, are servants of sin. They're saying you can stay gay and you can live gay and be gay for the rest of your life. They're, they're teaching and preaching that homosexuality is not a sin. Well, unfortunately, that's not what the Word of God says. Because the Word of God says that homosexuals shall not inherit the kingdom of God unless they repent. And what are they actually repenting from? They're repenting from that sin. They're, they're having a broken heart for what they're doing. They're saying they're, they're going before God saying, God, God. Uh, as a man, they will say, God, God, I don't want to make love to another man. They'll say, God, God, I don't want to fornicate with a man. I don't want to hold hands and kiss a man. Because that's not natural. And the women, they'll say, God, God, I don't want to make love to another woman. And the transgenders will say, God, God, I love the way you created me. I don't want to change my sexual organs to that of the opposite sex. See, again, it says that henceforth we shall not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth not, he dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead in, unto sin, indeed unto sin, but alive unto, unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey in the lust thereof. He said, not let sin, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. What does that mean to let sin reign in your mortal body? That means if that sin is reigning in your body, that's your God. That sin is your idol. That's your God. That's what you worship. You worship your sin. All sin, every last sin is idol worship. Because if you sin, you're saying you're turning your back on God and you're turning to your sin. That's idol worship. That's also unbelief. See, they don't ever get this much Bible preaching here. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. We're to obey Christ. We're to obey Jesus. Not our sin. Not our sexual lustful desires. Not our, not our desire for money. Not our desire for fame and fortune. Not our desire, not our desire for the same sex. No. We're to desire, we're to desire what the Lord wants us to desire. Neither yield ye your members, this is your organs, this is your hands, your feet, your sexual organs. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of, un of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Through Christ Jesus, sin does not have to have dominion over you. Through Christ Jesus. Sin does not have to have dominion over us. Only through Christ Jesus, though. So if we're if, if sin is having dominion over our lives, that means we're not in Christ. That means we need to humble ourselves, we need to put our sin aside and get right in the sight of God. That's I mean it's just that simple, folks. It's not that hard to swallow your pride and humble yourself. But guess what? Pride! Pride was the sin that cast Lucifer out of heaven. Pride was the sin that cast Lucifer out of heaven. So he goes on and says, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye are served the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart. You obey from the heart, so you got a change of heart. You had that change within you from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changed you from the inside out. It's not from the outside in. You know, many people, like the Pharisees, they'll make the outside clean. But the inside is nothing but dead bones. Dead, dry bones. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that from of the doctrine which was delivered to you. The gospel of Jesus Christ, that doctrine. And when you obey that in your heart, when you obey his doctrine, 
not the doctrines of men, not the doctrine of O.C. Allen, but the doctrines of Jesus Christ. Not the doctrine of Jezebel. No, my jurors. That's all right. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We're going to preach the gospel. I know Satan doesn't want to hear it. The devils don't want to hear it. I know this is apparently a gay community because they're all over the place. But guess what? This is the community that needs to hear it. And they're going to hear it in October at the Pride Parade and Festival. We'll, where? Beware this weekend. That's not until October. Trust me, we already know when it is. We already got our tickets reserved. We will be out there preaching the gospel because no one is preaching it in this city. This God-forsaken, wicked city of Atlanta, Georgia. No one's preaching the gospel here. You got wicked apostates like Andy Stanley and Charles Stanley running around. Crook Dollar, O.C. Allen. And, and what was that one uh, pedophile that got busted? Eddie Long. Eddie Long, another false prophet. All false prophets coming out of Atlanta. And that's why God is sending true men of God out to preach the true gospel because it's not being preached in this wicked city. This wicked city. What is it called? What do they call Atlanta? The, the New Hollywood? And it's like the gay capital of the South, I believe. Well, that's why God's sending his preachers out here to warn the wicked to turn from their wicked ways. Hey guys, church is about to let out. We got a lot of kids coming out. Okay. We need y'all not to block the sidewalk. Go ahead and move across the street. Well, we actually, just, we'll stand right there. We don't have to move across the street. We don't want anybody walking in. We don't have to. We don't have to move though. Well, this is a public sidewalk. Oh, the 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 floor, floor. Right? Well, we're not. We're not impeding anything. You're coming out. You're impeding. We're gonna stand right where we were. We're not. We're not moving across the street though, because this isn't impeding any traffic. We're not crossing the street. We don't have to. So. We're not gonna, we're not we're not moving across the street. Sorry, it's not happening. Not impeding anything. So, anyways, as I was reading in Romans 6, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' service to uncleanness, and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' service to righteousness and holiness. He's calling for holiness. God is calling for holiness from his people. Not to continue off in sin. Not to continue off in sin. That's okay. You can do that. That's fine. I'll just take it off of here. I'll just take it off of here. That's good. So anyways, back to Romans 6. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things, for the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. He's calling men to holiness. And the end ever, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what are wages? Wages is payments for your work. So when you're workers of iniquity and you're workers of sin. And you take glory and pleasure in your sin. You will be compensated. Your wages for that compensation will be death. That's what, the, that's what it means when it says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance.